Holy God, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy on us. Holy and mighty redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. Holy immortal one, sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy on us. Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. From all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all evil intents, Savior, deliver us. From sloth, worldliness, and love of money, from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your laws, Savior, deliver us. From sins of body and mind, from deceits of the world, flesh, and the devil. Savior, deliver us. From famine and disaster, from violence, murder, and dying unprepared. Savior, deliver us. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of our death and at the day of judgment. Savior, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, Savior, deliver us. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power, and by the preaching of your reign, Savior, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, Savior, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit, Savior, deliver us. Hear our prayers, O Christ our God. Govern and direct your holy church. Fill it with love and truth, and grant it that unity which is your will. Hear us, O Christ. Give us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world, and to make disciples of all the nations. Hear us, O Christ. Enlighten your bishops, priests, and deacons with knowledge and understanding that by their teaching and their lives they may proclaim your word. Hear us, O Christ. Give your people grace to witness to your word and bring forth the fruit of your spirit. Hear us, O Christ. Bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived. Hear us, O Christ. Strengthen those who stand Comfort and help the faint-hearted, raise up the fallen, and finally beat down Satan under our feet. Hear us, O Christ. Guide the leaders of the nations into the ways of peace and justice. Hear us, O Christ. Give your wisdom and strength to Joseph, the President of the United States, Andrew, the Governor of this state, and William, the mayor of this city, that in all things they may do your will for your glory and the common good. Hear us, O Christ. Give to the Congress of the United States, the members of the President's Cabinet, those who serve in our state legislature, and all others in authority, the grace to walk always in the ways of truth. Hear us, O Christ. Bless the justices of the Supreme Court and all those who administer the law, that they may act with integrity and do justice for all your people. Hear us, O Christ. Give us the will to use the resources of the earth to your glory and for the good of all. Hear us, O Christ. Bless and keep you all your people. Hear us, O Christ. Comfort and liberate the lonely, the bereaved, and the oppressed. Hear us, O Christ. Keep in safety those who travel and all who are in peril. Hear us, O Christ. Heal 
the sick in body, mind, or spirit, and provide for the homeless, the hungry, and the destitute. Hear us, O Christ. Guard and protect all children who are in danger. Hear us, O Christ. Shower your compassion on prisoners, hostages, and refugees, and all who are in trouble. Hear us, O Christ. Forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and turn their hearts. Hear us, O Christ. Hear us as we remember those who have died, and grant us with them a share in your eternal glory. Hear us, O Christ. Give us true repentance, forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance, and our deliberate sins, and grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your word. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I've set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring the clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, in you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. For they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. And teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. To those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. O 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The world that we live in will not be the same after this pandemic. Uh, and some of the change will be external, will be things in the world. I suspect here in New York that many of the restaurants that are closed now will never come back. I'm not sure Midtown will ever, ever be what it was. Many people won't ever ride the subway again. And most of those who do ride it will do it with a mask. I don't know that I will ever again get on the subway without a mask. But it's not just things in the external world that will have changed. I think that, that we will have changed. Something inside of us will have changed. In a way, we will have a sort of change of, of mind and a change of heart. It, I think it will be that there will be the time before COVID and the time after COVID. And how we now will live in the present in the way we perceive reality after COVID will be shifted. Even how we imagine the future after COVID, I think will be shifted, but also how we look at the past will be shifted. I, I know now already when I remember the past, I think I remember it very differently than I did just a year ago. Things that seemed mundane and ordinary now seem almost magical in my mind, even though in the external world, nothing really has changed, but in my mind, things just look different. There are those pivotal points like this that fill history and fill our lives. Those of us who lived through 9-11 know that. 9-11 was a pivotal point for our world. There was what the world was like before and then what the world was like after. And it was not just a matter of us now having to pass through metal detectors when we got on planes. How we looked at the world changed. How we looked at our present and how we imagined the future and truly even how we remembered our past changed after we had lived through 9-11. So these tragedies like this pandemic, like 9-11, they are pivotal points in our lives, but, but not just tragedies, even remarkably good things that happen to us are, are, are pivots like that in our lives. And when you meet someone and fall in love, you know, that's a cliche, but it's true. When you do, the world looks different to you. Um, when you have a child, you know, I've never had a child, but people who have their first child say that it makes how they see everything change. For our first ancestors, the early Christians, coming to know Jesus was a pivot like that. Once they had encountered Jesus and once they had made him a part of their lives, everything changed. Everything changed about how they lived and everything changed about how they saw the world they lived in. We know, speaking of cliches, the cliche of Paul being struck blind uh, on his horse. It was a bolt out of the blue that, that, that he couldn't ignore and that then sent him in search of the church to the community, to try to make sense of what had happened to him. And there in the church, he met other people 
who would encounter Jesus. Some when Jesus was still in the flesh, some who had met Jesus only in his post-resurrection life. But unlike Paul, most of them had not had this sort of dramatic, earth-shaking, blinding experience. But still they had had this experience of Jesus that had changed their lives. And there in the community of the church, Paul regained his sight. He was able to see again and how he saw after the experience on the Damascus Road was different than he had ever seen before. He went from seeing the world one way to a kind of blindness to then seeing the world in a new way that for him was truth and authenticity, so much so that he could say that whatever came before was not reality the way reality was real for him now. So his life was completely, completely changed. The people that Paul met when he went in search of the church, most of whom had not had that sort of dramatic experience of Jesus, had still had an experience of Jesus. And for them, the two crucial places where they met Jesus was in the waters of baptism and at the Eucharistic table. And there in community, in the community's baptism and in the, in the community's common table, they had met Jesus. Baptism for them was a pivotal moment, just as pivotal as Paul's experience on the Damascus Road. For them, there was life before baptism, and then there was life after baptism. And baptism made them look at all of it differently. I imagine that for our first ancestors, once they had been immersed in the waters of baptism and had begun their lives over again, Every cup of water that they ever drank after that tasted like baptism to them, made them remember that moment in their life. John the Divine, our patron in, in his revelation, talks about paradise and tells us that through the center of paradise runs this river of baptismal water. It is the marker of salvation in Christ. It is what paradise is like. Paradise is like baptism. And then when they thought of the past, when they thought of every instance of water in the past, somehow now it must have been tainted with the water of baptism. And so we come at the beginning of Lent and we get of all things, the story of Noah and his ark. A strange sort of way to begin Lent when you think of it, because you might expect Lent to begin with a story of, of people fasting and people being repentant. And, but what we really get is we get a story about Noah and his family being saved through the water. The water leading them from the world that was, a world that was disordered and sinful and broken through the water into a world made new, a sort of world rebooted, we might say, in our own time. The water changed everything. The water changed everything for Noah and for his family. When our first ancestors heard the story of Noah, like all the other water they knew in their lives, it made them think of baptism. And so for them, they were now Noah. They were Noah, who had come into the church as a place of safety and who had passed through the water and come out not just alive, but more alive than ever in a world that was transformed, a world where they lived in a covenant with God that as the story of Noah says, would never ever be broken. We know that the life that Noah lived in, whether Noah was a literal person or a figurative person, it doesn't matter. The story that our ancestors give us is a true story. And it's a story of God saving the world through the water, creating a pivotal point of the world before and the world after. And our ancestors who had been baptized could hear this story as none other than their story, the story of their baptism and of their being saved 
and brought into a new world through the water. And this is the story the church gives us on this first Sunday of Lent. In our ordinary lives, we are exceedingly busy and exceedingly distracted. It is very easy to forget the fact that we now live in a post-baptismal world. We go about our lives. We live ordinary, distracted lives. It's just the way it is. And the church every year brings us back to this Lenten season, when in normal times, we, to use the, the, the phrase that has become so hackneyed, but it's true, we give something up not to punish ourselves, but to create a space in ourselves so that we can remember that we are baptized people, that we are people that God has saved through the water of baptism and entered into a covenant that will never be broken, no matter what. This year, what more could we give up? We have, we have given up so much. Life has made us give up so much. Why, we've even had to give up seeing one another in community. We've even had to give up the Eucharist, a terrible fasting, a great deprivation. So fasting and giving things up, always good and good this year too. But, but this Lent, this Lent perhaps we can step over that piece of this equation. And we can go directly to the reality of this story of Noah. We have all been saved through the water. Through no merit of our own, God has taken us, brought us into the ark, as the church is often called, and taken us through the water so that our lives are rebooted. We are brought into a new world. It's easy to forget it. It's easy to forget the great, unimaginable grace that God has given us in baptism. This Lent, stripped as we are of so much, stripped as we are of the things that normally distract us from the truth of our saved lives, perhaps this Lent, we can go directly to the point of it all, and that is to remember every day, with every glass of water we drink, with every shower we take, with every puddle we walk through, that we are baptized, that God through the water has brought us into a new world, not because we are worthy of it, not because we deserve it in any way, but because God in God's infinite mercy has loved us into a new life a life that we know from the story of Noah will always, always be ours in a covenant that will never be broken. Amen.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength, so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. As you might know, the cathedral's operating budget, like that of so many institutions, has suffered under the gathering restrictions of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, we have made it a priority to retain our staff and to maintain the important work of Cathedral Community Cares in our humble attempt to walk in the way of love. In the spirit of that same humility and love, if you find that you would like to join us in sustaining this ministry, please head to stjohndivine.org slash donate or click on the link in the video description. We thank you for your support, for joining us in worship and being a part of our online community. And we pray that you will continue to pray with us and walk with us as we dream of a brighter day.